I'll start with a brief outline of what I'm going to speak. So it will be uh, the Kastler framework, uh, which just means that I will not start necessarily with the observable algebra, but with the bigger field algebra. In this case, it will be my Clifford algebra, uh, com complex Clifford algebra. And then I will uh, introduce super selection of the weak hypercharge. And uh, after a brief survey of previous attempts to understand the origin of the standard model, I will uh, introduce the Clifford algebra as a graded Z to graded tensor product of Clifford 4 and Clifford 6. In fact, I will use this tensor product, which has been previously introduced by Cole in 2018. And then we'll see that the assumption of the super selection of weak hypercharge make sterile neutrino special. We cannot separate particles from antiparticles for it because they have same zero value of the weak hypercharge. I will skip, I think, this point now because otherwise uh, I will not speak about the simple components of the observable Jordan subalgebra and about the role of combining in the Jordan subalgebra observables with symmetry generators because that won't fit with the one hour talk. But uh, the important point will be that Higgs field, the Higgs field uh, fits nicely in the Clifford algebra framework as the odd part of a superconnection. I mean, it's a notion introduced, I will say a few words uh, when we come to this uh, super connection. And uh, we'll see the role of the Bianchi identity for the super curvature, which allows to extend beyond the standard procedure the notion of super curvature and to account for uh, symmetry breaking. And then I'll make the deduced from a bosonic Lagrangian using the square of the super curvature uh, as usual. Uh, mass relations among the gauge bosons, which would recover relations known to from ground unified theories. But there will be one new relation for the Higgs mass, which happens to be satisfied with uh, less than a percentage error. And I will conclude with some summary and discussion of open problems. Now, the Clifford algebra approach to the standard model is not new. I learned from 
the thesis of Paul already that there was uh, work of Castle Bologna and Gatto some 40 years ago, more than 40 years ago. And uh, here we'll say some, uh, it, it's, uh, we have to give some more argument to see the role of specific Clifford algebras. And uh, we'll use this famous classification and that will lead us, uh, will in fact first start with desiderata, which comes from what we do know from the standard model, or if you like, from observations. And, but first, uh, a few more words about the framework. What they, the fact is that since uh, we'll put a special emphasis on super selections rules and this all by its uh, old notion introduced by uh, Wick, Wigner and Whiteman uh, 70 years ago. Uh, it's not perhaps very popular, so I will remind it that uh, super selection rules are given by observables which commutes with all observables and define coherent superposition, define coherent sectors so, uh, by the eigenvalues of the super selected observables. And we cannot uh, define a pure state, a coherent superposition from vectors which have different eigenvalues of uh, different charges, say. On the contrary, when particles and anti particles of some kind have the same value of the super selected charges, then we can have Majorana particles, which are in fact coherent superposition by, from particles and other particles. So, well, uh, Clifford algebras, if you like, are suggested by the fact that uh, fundamental fermions seem to come in numbers four or 16 or well, its powers of two. And these are precisely the dimensions of um, spinor representations in the Clifford algebras themselves. There is a, another property which will single out uh, we like to have real Clifford algebras, that is Majorana spinners, and at the same time, we like to have complex chiral representations. So our algebra will be the complexification of a real algebra, or if you prefer, we start with a complex algebra which has a real structure. And real structures have been used and classified, for instance, in the non commutative geometry approach to the standard model. Uh, Alain Cohn had made uh, emphasis on the uh, choice of real structure. 
And it turns out that for the overall algebra, we have the structure, uh, the real structures of Clifford algebras are classified again module eight, like the real Clifford algebras, and will take the characteristic signature of n equal two, which is uh, the same as key for the 10. And uh, it is good to remember that first uh, key for uh, to see before giving abstract um, instead of giving abstract justification, just to consider the important examples. We have Clifford 3 1 and uh, as the Lorentz algebra, which has uh, signature 2, and it is characterized by having Majorana spinners and uh, natural complexification by introducing gamma 5, which is i times the Clifford 3 1 pseudo scalar, the Fox setter element, which gives the simplification, and we have complex chiral spinners coming naturally. If you take the case n equal 2, this gives, uh, if you like, uh, two dimensional conformal field theory, and on the other hand, it, uh, in pure mathematics, the Dirac equation comes as a Cauchy-Riemann equation. So, indeed, uh, the, when we regard we consider the internal space, we need an automorphism group which is compact. Since in physics, the internal symmetry, the gauge groups are compact groups. And then we'll have to consider a matrix of the definite matrix, that is Clifford algebra of the type P0 or 0Q. And among these, we already saw the example of uh, n equal 2. And one could say that the next example, when uh, n equals 0, so, so the uh, index, the order of the Clifford algebra is Clifford 2 plus 8 times n. And uh, when we take n equals 0, we get two-dimensional theory. When we get uh, set n equal 1, uh, we are coming to the algebra Clifford pen, which is the basis of what I will be talking about. But it's uh, amusing to say, to, to notice that actually n equal minus 1 also uh, can be considered. And this corresponds to Clifford minus 6, which uh, we heard already in the talk of Maya and uh, Cole, that uh, in the talk of Cole first, that it was uh, an algebra which generates the octonia. 
Ivan, no. it seems it seems like you may have gotten ahead of yourself in your slides. Maybe you're maybe you mean to be two slides back. No, I, it was on purpose. I I wanted to go to uh, okay faster to to the. Okay, so we are starting therefore with the uh, algebra P for 10, and uh, its gauge group, its automorphism group is the uh, group spin 10, right? So then, and uh, what we used to define the gauge group of the standard model, we needed the additional structure. And uh, this structure comes from the fact that the Clifford algebra can be described as acting on octonians, or rather the automorphism algebra, the automorphism group spin 10 has a nice representation on O2, on the octonians, and it was noticed by Michel de Bois-Violette back in his first paper that, uh, in fact, it was noticed even before by Gursi, that selecting one imaginary unit and the splitting of the octonians in C plus C3, C cube, uh, one obtains a subgroup of the automorphism group G2 of the octonians, which uh, is precisely the SU3 and can be identified with the color SU3. Moreover, uh, the fact that SU3 is unimodular, uh, that we have SU3 and not U3, as a, a group of black color tells us that the determinant or the vector product uh, triple, uh, should play a role and the combination of the scalar and three-dimensional vector product leads one automatically to the division algebra of octonians. And then, uh, depending on, uh, it was noticed first by uh, Michel and myself that dealing with spin 9 as a subgroup of the automorphism group of the exceptional Jordan algebra, algebra of 3 by 3 matrices of octonium one comes, uh, one uh, arrives precisely at the gauge group of the standard model, uh, something which was then uh, derived in a direct way using the action of 
spin 9 on the octonians on O2 by Krasnov and later had uh, followed a similar procedure starting with the complexification of the exceptional Jordan algebra and its uh, automorphism group D6 and going to the symmetry of one generation, you obtained an uh, extension, uh, left right symmetric extension of the symmetry group of the standard model. Now, we, the, our point here, as I announced beforehand, is to use the super selection of the weak hypercharge. What is the motivation for this? Uh, people of the older generation like me are uh, accustomed to see the hypercharge of a, as a uh, broken symmetry. The hypercharge, even the name comes from hyperons, and uh, it was a approximate symmetry. But it evolved in the standard model to a, not just to an exact symmetry for all processes we know, but it is the center, central generator of the gauge group of the standard model. So it commutes with all symmetry generators and by Noether theorem by all, uh, with all conserved observables. But also, if we introduce, uh, if we realize the Clifford algebra, Clifford 4, with two fermionic oscillators, uh, pairs of oscillators, creation and annihilation operators, and uh, Clifford 6 by a triple of uh, creation and annihilation operator denoted here by B, J. So we have A alpha, alpha equal one and two generators of the Clifford four and uh, BJ, J equal one, two, three generators of Clifford six. Then uh, we can realize the uh, weak isospin, left isospin uh, generators as uh, familiar combinations uh, of A1 star A2 are uh, I plus uh, A two star and uh, the, the conjugate is I minus and their commutator is uh, the third component of the weak isospin. While uh, B the invariant combination of uh, B J star, the sum of commutators, one third, gives uh, B minus L, the uh, uh, baryon minus lepton number, which is part of the definition of the hypercharge. The hypercharge itself has the most natural definition for an algebra of uh, 
creation and annihilation operators. The most natural operator when you have such an algebra is the number operator. And it turns that out that one half the hypercharge is nothing but the weighted difference of number operators. One third of the sum of three number operators minus one half the sum of the two flavor operators. And uh, this hypercharge de uh, defines uh, U1 transformation group of the uh, creation and annihilation operators, which has opposite signs and uh, different Mm, one third phase factor and one half uh, phase factor for the B and the A's. And super selection of observables means that it, immediately it reduces the symmetry, the Lie algebra of the symmetry, to operators of the type A alpha star A beta and Bj star Bk, which generate, the first commutator generates U2 and the second U3. So we have a one parameter extension of the gauge the algebra of the standard model and this extra generator is precisely the B minus L which we introduced in the very beginning here. So, what we gain with uh, it, it would take time and look artificial to describe the generators of the uh, gauge group of the standard model in terms of the uh, gamma mu commutator with gamma nu uh, as we usually describe the Lie algebra of associated uh, of, with the Clifford algebra uh, which gamma we have to select while this basis of fermionic oscillator we have easy to remember and natural uh, formulas which give the color symmetry extended by B minus L and the weak isospin. In the only variable which goes uh, a depends on both A and B is precisely the hypercharge, the difference of number operators. However, these are the uh, obvious invariants, but there appear some unexpected ones. These are the product of all uh, annihilation operators and the product of all creation, all five creation operators, we have here uh, e to the i phi over three, d to the i phi over two uh, with the opposite signs. So omega and omega star are also 
uh, Imbanians. Well, they are not Kermitian, but there are some or weighted some with complex conjugate factors are Hermitian and their products are both Hermitian. And this is the primitive, the prime Jordan subalgebra, which corresponds precisely to the sterile, sterile neutrino. So when uh, we uh, shall uh, when we uh, will consider particles alone and, un and distinguish particles from antiparticles, we should take aside the algebra of sterile, sterile neutrino because uh, in it we may have a, in effect the physical basis of Majorana neutrinos which are don't distinguish particles from antiparticles. So already this was a kind of unexpected bonus from taking, singling out the hypercharge as a super selection. So we can distinguish particles from antiparticles only for y different from zero. And the uh, new R and anti and antiparticles, so the right handed neutrino and in the antiparticles, uh, which is left handed uh, and in neutrino left uh, are not physically well distinguished. We we are not. Uh, they are not observed experimentally so far. We have only indirect uh, indication from neutrino oscillations that they exist. But uh, we uh, don't have the right to separate them. Uh, we may be obliged to work as it is in a popular theory uh, with Majorana neutrino. So, therefore, we'll consider now, uh, we would like to re restrict our Clifford algebra to the space of particles. Uh, before, uh, here, uh, let me explain. Uh, we consider the algebra of in, uh, corresponding to the functions of, uh, on internal space, so to speak. Uh, algebra characterizing the internal space of particles. Uh, this, uh, why one chooses uh, Clifford 10? Uh, Clifford 10 has a single irreducible representation of dimension 32, and 32 is precisely, it's a real representation, it's precisely the number of both particles, fermions and antifermions, including the sterile uh, neutrino, and has no, and one is not forced to introduce, if one starts with a popular SO10 good uh, ground unified theory, one then has to use the adjoint representation, uh, one has to use the adjoint representation, which uh, has leptoquarks and predicts uh, unwanted 
uh, effects like proton decay uh, in so in T410, one just has the uh, particles and anti particles. And uh, after complexification, one has the complex 16 dimensional representations of chiral uh, particles, which is also, uh, as I said in the beginning, something we desire and we are accustomed to have in with usual vial spinners. But then the procedure uh, borrowed from the non-commutative ge geometry approach consists in taking tensor product of this internal space algebra with the ordinary spinner's function um, or rather quantized fields of space-time belonging to the uh, spinner bundle, to the spinner representation of um, the Poincaré group. And since we have here both left and right uh, chiral spinners and particles and antiparticles, and we have the same in the space-time part of the tensor product, this creates a problem of fermion doubling. One should actually say quadrupling, uh, which was noted long ago by Gracia Bondier and quarters. And uh, to reduce the problem, we would, since we uh, anticipate multiplication with four-dimensional spinners, uh, we consider the projection on the particle space. And here plays a role the fact uh, this was done uh, without uh, special treatment of particles and antiparticles by Michel Dubois Violet and myself uh, a year ago. Uh, and uh, we had reduction to the 16 dimensional uh, particle space. And uh, we defined then uh, a super connection in that space. Here, uh, the novelty is that we'll make a reduction to the 15 dimensional space of particles with non-zero values of hypercharge, which uh, are clearly distinguished from antiparticles. And this will have uh, interesting consequences, as we'll see. This is the main uh, novelty of the paper uh, which I'm talking about now. Well, let me uh, introduce some technicality. Uh, we have five pairs of basic projectors in our space. These are the products of in uh, the two opposite orders of creation and annihilation operators. We have A alpha star A alpha 
and a alpha a alpha star their sum is equal to the unit operator these are the canonical anti commutation relations and same for the b so we could say that we have uh, five projectors and the unit operators but it is more practical to speak about pi, five pairs of projectors with uh, five relations, namely P, uh, pi alpha plus pi alpha prime is one for alpha equal one and two, and pj and plus pj prime is equal to one for j equal one, two, and three. And I remind you that uh, alpha refers to the flavor, j to the color index. And uh, in terms of this, we can construct the basic projectors on color quarks. They happen to be uh, given by triple of uh, by a product of three one p j and p k prime p l prime where j k and l will always be in our formula a permutation of one two three which means they will be different and now l the projector or the Force color lepton uh, will have to be P1, P2, P3. H however, we, uh, this will give four leptons as we have four, four quarks, uh, four flavors of quarks for each uh, given color. But uh, we would like to throw away the uh, right-handed neutrino, so we subtract from one the product of two of these uh, projectors, pi one and pi two. In fact, primitive states in the in this Jordan algebra approach to uh, quantum theory are uh, products of five elementary projectors solely. And uh, there are two to the fifth such product of primitive projectors. And I have written just as example, the primitive projectors corresponding to the left-handed neutrino and electron. And to the right-handed electron. Oh, here uh, there is an error. Uh, this is the uh, right-handed neutrino, what is written pi 1, pi 2, which we throw away. We ha I have to write pi 1 prime and pi 2 prime in this place. Well, uh, Jordan algebra, uh, the Jordan, the particle algebra can be then decomposed into irreducible components. Uh, primitive Jordan, prime Jordan subalgebras, uh, which are distinguished by the hypercharge. I, I think this is uh, once the classification of uh, primitive of prime uh, irreducible component of a 
Jordan Outro was given by uh, Jordan von Neumann and Wigner in 1934. And uh, it, if I try to explain it in detail, uh, that will, could take a separate lecture, but uh, they are determined by just two numbers, let's say a rank and the degree of the algebra. And uh, well, it, it has been written down for this particular case in the preprint. Uh, so I will not stop uh, on this. I will go to things which have uh, physical significance. I will jump over uh, the uh, interplay between symmetries and observables in the Jordan algebra. There is a paper on uh, understanding of neuter symmetry in terms of Jordan algebras by John Baez. Uh, but, uh, it's an uh, interesting but side story for me now. Now we come to a here, well, uh, I've noticed that uh, the complex chiral spinors are conveniently considered as complexified pairs of octonians. Uh, this uh, is done by in two alternative way in a uh, preprint by Brian and in the work in progress of Kirill Krasnov, which we heard uh, talk already. The Higgs field was the motivation for considering non-commutative geometry. Uh, we have, um, there is a description by Maldacina, popular uh, way of describing uh, the gauge theory of the standard model. Uh, it's a beauty and the beast. The beauty is the uh, gauge uh, theory and the beast is the Higgs. And uh, what uh, non-commutative geometry approach and the superconnection approach, which is a variation of it, uh, tries to make the beast also beautiful. So uh, it does the Higgs field uh, finds a natural place as the old part of a Z2 graded Clifford algebra. Uh, so every Clifford algebra has uh, natural Z2 grading uh, and it, uh, the gauge group is always uh, part of the even part, while the Higgs field intertwines left and right and uh, belongs to the odd part of the Clifford algebra. But uh, he, here we can say uh, something more. It turns out, so we'll be will defining the particle projector projection 
of our field algebra in the natural way. We take the uh, vector on particle space to be the sum P capital P uh, of projection on the leptons and the projection on the quarks. The quarks is the normal, usual projection, uh, sum of three quarks, three colors, each of four flavors, while the uh, lepton here is projected on lepton as thrown away anti-leptons. Here, has a new quality. It's a three-dimensional projection on electron, electron neutrino, and uh, right-handed, left-handed electron and electron neutrino, and right-handed electron only. Well, it turns out that project, and that's a crucial point already uh, stressed in our work with Michel, that projecting out, say, uh, so to speak, quark creation and annihilation operators gives zero. And that corresponds to the fact that there is no Higgs which would generate symmetry breaking of color of QCD. This is uh, automatic here when we make the particle projection. One may then ask, uh, don't we lose the, don't we uh, the SU3 generators, which we do need. No, when you have, it turns out that uh, this doesn't happen. Uh, when we have a product of BJ star BK and project uh, on the particle space, we get this product multiplied by a projection on the, by a number operator of B star L, B L, where again J, K, K, L are a permutation of one, two, three. And so, in fact, uh, L is determined when we know the pair J, K. And uh, BJK, uh, defined by capital BJK, defined by uh, this formula, are, well, uh, you see it, uh, satisfy the same permutation relations as the SU3 generators. So, uh, the projector saves the observables, which we don't want to lose, but it kills the unwanted, automatically kills the unwanted components of the Higgs field, which is odd field. Well, the projection of a alpha or A alpha star. When I write the star in parentheses, it means that it's either creation or annihilation operator. Uh, that changes. It's not zero. It, it belongs to the odd part of, a, of the simplest, simple, of the lowest dimensional simple Lie superalgebra, the superalgebra SL2 slash 1. 
Well, uh, the quark projection of the flavor uh, creation and elation operators gives just the same creation and elation operators multiplied by the quark projection. So, uh, here is an explicit expression of uh, the projection with respect to this three-dimensional lepton space. It turns out that it gives just the odd generators of this uh, simple Clifford superalgebra. Uh, which has all eight altogether generators, four odd and four even. And the four odd, and I have, you, I found that there was a, a paper uh, which that was a site issued, the uh, uh, description of all Lee super algebra is given by Victor Katz, but uh, here there is an uh, analysis in depth of this particular uh, super algebra by, uh, in a paper by Gertz Kuella and Volker Schumerus, and uh, it turns out to allow immediately a simple identification. So this uh, third order operators still out. So we see that uh, the projection on particle space makes the this uh, odd generators into more general odd elements of the algebra Clifford four, namely odd elements of third order products of three generators. Here I have uh, reproduced the uh, basic anti-computation relations for the odd generators. The remaining generators are uh, nothing but the weak isospin and the hypercharge. Uh, now, I come to the notion of superconnection. It uh, was uh, first, the, the, as a model with such a super algebra with an uh, unusual application, was introduced in 1979, the same year as the paper of Casal Buoni and uh, Gato uh, for Clifford algebras by independently by Yuval Neyman and Fairley. And uh, then uh, only six years later, uh, rediscovered and named in mathematics by Quillen and collaborators. And then rather rarely uh, I wonder why used once by Cochro. Uh, of course, there are more references, but I uh, mention a few uh, who uh, distinguish. Very nice exposition of Rupstorf, which was known to Michel, and was, uh, he, Michel initiated the use of it in our context. Now, uh, uh, the most recent application is therefore our joint work with Michel, and afterwards, uh, there, is, there is a week later or a few uh, weeks later, uh, a couple of papers of Jean Thierry Mick, which uh, we um, uh, was inspired 
for uh, understanding the role of Bianchi identity, which I, well, I, I think my time is approaching uh, to conclusion. So uh, let me uh, go a little faster. Uh, the notion of superconnection is uh, a generalization of the ordinary uh, connection D is D plus A, where A uh, D is uh, mm, differential of X and A um, is uh, gauge one form, gauge field one form. Uh, and here, uh, since uh, this uh, one forms and um, the differential one forms anti commute, we multiply by the chirality d to commute automatically with uh, Higgs field phi, which belongs to the odd part of the Clifford algebra. Uh, you know that in non commutative geometry, uh, they multiply the internal pi part of the Dirac operator by gamma 5 in order to anti-commute with the space-time. Here, following theory Mika, do the opposite. We multiply by the chirality of internal space. We multiply the usual connection. And when we go to curvature, uh, since chirality commutes, with D and S square one will obtain uh, the usual curvature for the usual ordinary part of the curvature. Now, uh, so then, as I said, uh, the uh, once we have the curvature form, we can write uh, bosonic Lagrangian. Uh, here there is a subtlety, the bosonic Lagrangian, which is just uh, absolute value square of the curvature, uh, turns out uh, to uh, have only trivial minima with respect to the Higgs field. And uh, but we see that the Bianchi identity, which is a, equivalent to the super Jacobi identity of the super algebra, uh, admits a more general solution when we add a constant operator to the uh, Higgs field. And here, uh, is a point which will play a role. The Higgs field has two parts, one which uh, has the projector on three space leptonic and another uh, which keeps the all creation operators on each of the color subspaces. They have different normalization, and rho is a factor uh, which uh, equates to makes con uh, coherent to normalizations. I think I I am. Uh, at the end of my time. So perhaps I will just uh, summarize, I will not uh, let me say, this term in the curvature, uh, the term chi 
commutator of D with phi is the one which in the bosonic Lagrangian is responsible for the uh, masses of the gauge bosons. And uh, that part of the <clears throat> mass formula, which gives one zero mass eigenvalues and the usual relation between uh, W and Z masses uh, with the tangents of the Weinberg tangle is uh, about the same and the derivation is the same as in grand unified theory. However, uh, what is new is a, a prediction, as I said in the beginning, of the Higgs mass. And that comes from equating the norm of the force color, so to speak, the leptons, with each of the uh, standard colors. The fact that the leptonic space is smaller, it has three elements, makes uh, for the factor rho, which uh, turns out that to equate the two norms, we need rho square equal one half. And it is this relation which gives a sim similar, which gives, uh, it is this row which gives a relation between the Higgs mass and the W mass. It is the Higgs mass squared is 4, 1 plus 6 rho to the fourth over 1 plus 6 rho square times the W mass square. And this uh, turns out to be just four times the theoretical cosine of the Weinberg angle squared times the uh, W mass. And that's uh, verified with uh, amazing accuracy. I was uh, surprised to find it. It was uh, not something else. So now, uh, in the concluding remark, I repeat what I think is the uh, important thing. Uh, technically, it was important to, div to present Clifford 10 as such a tensor product set to graded. And we saw that uh, projection on particles acted differently on the two factors and made sure that Higgs breaks only the flavor symmetry as it should and gives the color symmetry intact. In, in and if speaking about uh, open problems, there are plenty. The main open problem, in my view, is uh, an understanding of the three generations and CKM matrix like the ugly part of the standard standard model. And uh, I think uh, uh, we speak about reality because there is three in reality and in uh, uh, the number of generation. But so far, reality plays the role in the Yukawa coupling. Uh, that is, we have left and right spinners 
and the Higgs field, which plays the role of an internal space vector. So it's a coupling of three of it. And I think it's correctly noticed that as we throw away the color part of it, that it is in fact uh, quaternionic reality as it was emphasized in the talk of Maya in the call. But uh, I mean, the use of reality or of some thing else which comes with the Octonian formalism to understand the three generation and to uh, reduce the awfully large number of parameters which come with the Yukawa coupling in the CKM matrix. I think this uh, is the real challenge which remains to any theoretical approach uh, aiming to understand simplify, make more attractive the standard model. Thank you. Thank you for the day. Thank you for the day. I guess I have a question. So you have this new relation uh, between Higgs mass and W mass. Yeah. Um, maybe can you show? Oh, oh it's here. Uh, so, at what energy uh, is this relation satisfied to one percent accuracy? Uh, no. I can say about the theoretical, but uh, uh, let, let me say since I claimed that it is uh, with uh, big accuracy. Uh, I should uh, explain that uh, the uh, this big accuracy is achieved if we look at the experimental numbers, which are at the experimental energy, not in uh, some fantastic, uh, very high unification energy. As, uh, all, uh. However, uh, we take, I said, the theoretical. Uh, uh, cosine the, uh, squared the, the, uh, the theoretical one is the tangent of uh, the Weinberg angle squared is uh, 3 uh, over 5 uh, and uh, of course that people believe is only uh, uh, that is not quite uh, fitting the observed uh, Weinberg angle and the conventional wisdom is that the Weinberg, this uh, Weinberg angle which comes in our theory as well, but it has been derived first in grand unified theories, can only be true in unification scale and then one has to look what uh, renormalization group flow uh, does with it for uh, observable energies. Here there is, uh, uh, if you like, uh, something uh, not very clean uh, that I take this uh, coefficient which is four times the square of the uh, theoretical Weinberg angle uh, with its uh, theoretical value, 5 over 2. And the relation we have is that um, the mass of the Higgs is square root of 5 over 2 times the mass of the W. If you don't speak about the Weinberg angle, but say this is the numerical coefficient which you obtain, then this relation is satisfied with the present day experimental value. So it's the energy which are presently observed at LHC. Thank you. 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 Th
but not with the volume of handle at uh, LHC energy. Yeah. Well, I said what. Uh, so, uh, in effect, maybe you're right that uh, that uh, we expect uh, from such three first kind of approximation, three level, three level approximation. Uh, to be valid only at some unobserved very high energy, unification scale and so on. And the fact that uh, we have a relation which uh, is satisfied at presently observed energy may be viewed as accidental. I mean, I uh, think that one should have a more uh, detailed analysis to really answer this question. Whether, but um, as it, I don't believe that this is purely accidental. I think that this is telling us something because I didn't. Uh, choose the numbers to fit, uh, they were naturally coming up. Could I just add, I, I think that sounds like not necessarily a problem in the sense that M Higgs and M weak, I mean, sorry, M Higgs and MW are ultimately both curvatures of the, uh, you know, effective potential at the VEV and that the, the effective potential doesn't run with uh, the full effective potential does not run with scale. So it's consistent with us all being true at the gut scale, I, I think. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, I'm not sure there are people uh, waiting to ask more questions, so let me ask another one. Uh, the uh, sterile neutrino is one of the most interesting uh, things there is in grand unified fluid because uh, seesaw mechanism is usually explained using uh, neutrino, right? So, uh, and we've done a lot of work projecting uh, right from the neutrino out. Um, yeah. Can you comment on this? It seems that you're throwing away some very interesting physics by this model. At least, well, you see some uh, usual based on it. Can you come on? No, uh, I'm rather separating uh, the physics of uh, uh, the particles of the old standard model uh, from the physics of the sterile neutrino. Uh, we, uh, all we know is that the sterile neutrino is sterile. It doesn't interact with, don't see it. We do, it doesn't interact with the ordinary particles. Uh, and so um, I only use the fact that we are not entitled to speak, to distinguish between sterile neutrino and sterile antineutrino. And therefore, when projecting on particle space, I only uh, spoke about, I called particles, leptons with y smaller than zero, strictly negative, and quarks with strictly positive y. I threw away uh, the y equals zero subspace. In fact, I didn't mention, but it is in the paper which you have, uh, the mm, <coughs> fact that uh, mm, I lost my uh, 
So never mind. Okay, uh, there is one more question from Sajin there, so please go ahead. Uh, uh, hello, okay, can you hear me? Yeah, yes. Yeah, I have a question about the uh, exceptional Jordan algebra K3A. So in some of your written paper, you write down the characteristic equations of J3A. It's a, as we know, it's a cubic equation. If I were to use the three by three Hermitian matrices to remember any recursion element for me, what might be the significance of the root of the cubic equation? Uh, it was very difficult to understand the question, so maybe you can try it. Could I suggest, uh, Ivan, because yeah, because it's loud on your end, uh, it's hard to hear the question. Could you mute your mic, Ivan, while the question is being asked, and then we could unmute when you're answering? Mm -hmm. So should I repeat something? Let me yeah. try. So go, go ahead, Tejinder. Uh, okay, can you hear me now? Uh, okay, uh, so I have a question about the exceptional Jordan algebra J3H. In some of your recent papers, you write down the characteristic equation for J3H. It is a cubic equation, as we know. Uh, suppose we were to use these three by three Hermitian matrices to represent uh, three generation elementary fermions. What would be the significance of the roots of this cubic equation? Because they are invariants of the algebra. They must mean something. Thank you. No, he's, he's muted, I think. He's muted. Yes. Uh, um, well, uh, we haven't gone very far with the exceptional Jordan algebra because uh, the exceptional Jordan algebra, all its modules or its representations are multiples of this algebra. What we know more is the algebra, the subalgebra of one generation. And then we replace the algebra, uh, the corresponding algebra then would be J28 instead of J38. And we don't make any use of the character equation of G28 because we replace the algebra G28 by its associative envelope, one of the type of associative envelope, which is the algebra Clifford 9. And now uh, afterwards we were working essentially with Clifford 9. And my present expose was about uh, Clifford 10. So uh, the direct analysis and mm, making conclusions from the uh, characteristic e equation of uh, the uh, Jordan algebra itself, I mean, mathematically, of course, the characteristic equation is, should, should tell us something, but uh, our experience is of different kind. We, we, I, I cannot say anything directly about it. Okay, thank you. Okay, thank, thank you. you. Uh, Carol, I see Cole has a question. Uh, can you hear me? 
Okay, perfect. Um, I actually just wanted to, uh, uh, one of the things I wanted to do was uh, clarify that what the answer was to Kirill's question. So, um, Ivan, can you, can you repeat again? Um, so uh, you have this um, uh, hypercharge uh, that you're using to separate your particles into different Jordan subalgebras. And um, so you've got one of these subalgebras uh, is holding the sterile neutrinos. Um, so can you be, can you clarify, are you, you're not, is it that you, you're just separating that space? You're not actually throwing away the sterile neutrinos, is that right? In fact, uh, what I wanted to uh, say, uh, to, to answer to, to Kirill, we are not throwing away uh, the uh, neutrino. We consider separately the rest, and I think we have a physical motivation and justification to to separate uh, the rest because uh, the experience tells us that they don't interact. But uh, we, um, it is just not uh, the subject of my uh, present paper, which I present here, uh, to uh, go deeper into uh, physics of sterile neutrino. This is a matter of, of the future, and I'm not sure whether I, I, I rather would not venture to think that such general consideration, like belonging to a separate Jordan algebra. Uh, would tell us much about it. We have to uh, think about it independently. But I think it is significant that uh, when we decide to separate, not to throw away, but to separate the sterile neutrino sector from what we call particles and antiparticles, just because of this, we obtain the possibility to, to have a relation, to, to derive a relation between the Higgs mass and the W. As a matter of fact, if we don't assume this, we also find a relation, but people don't speak about it. It is just that the Higgs mass is twice the W mass, which is very wrong experimentally. It's uh, 160 is considerably bigger than 125. Uh, so uh, we improve one relation, uh, which is very far from the mark uh, by just uh, separating, not throwing away, the uh, sterile neutrinos. Okay, and so do you, and so do you anticipate being able to write down both Dirac masses and Majorana masses, mass terms? So I meant mass terms. Uh, you, if the question is about the fermionic Lagrangian, I've uh, uh, written it down in, uh, in the paper. I didn't speak here about it. There was no time, but uh, this, the lack of time was not the only reason I, I didn't talk about it. I think the fermion part of the Lagrangian uh, really demands the mixing of generation. Uh, physically, we know that. And uh, that uh, uh, external problem, so to speak, uh, we don't know how to do it. But even 
in the case of one generation, I must say that uh, what uh, this paragraph, this section is uh, writing is uh, provisional. It, I um, have to, uh, there are real problems in uh, this putting together uh, the vile spinners and the, uh, in fact, we have to separate. It's not just simple tensor product. It, it's multiplying vile spinners with what uh, properly corresponds to this uh, part of the internal uh, space Lagrangian, and I think uh, that is uh, under investigation. As, uh, <laughs> <laughs> you, okay. And by us, finished yes. your talk. Yes. Yes. The same okay. words. I, um, can I ask you one more question? Please. Okay, um, so do you have any feeling for um, why the hypercharge operator is special? Um, from an algebraic perspective, like why hypercharge and not some other U1? Yeah. Uh, first, I, I, I think I said that I will repeat. Uh, first, I do remember. From the point I, I do remember, do but do? There, there could be other. Um, so I do remember what you said. You said it was a difference between the number operators. Um, but yeah. you could also imagine other kind of equally natural. Um, generators, for example, the sum of those two terms, or the the number operator for U five. Uh, yeah, I, I I I don't like U five, uh, but <laughs> but no, it, it, there was also the fact uh, which is uh, true for the uh, present theory of standard model uh, that uh, why is the center the hypercharge is the center of the Lie algebra uh, of the standard model. So that is, that, uh, uh, it is only symmetry uh, among the symmetries of the standard model, which commutes with all other symmetries, with all other generators of the gauge group. It's a, the, the generator at the center of the U1 center of the gauge group. So it, it, if we believe in, uh, so I, it's a kind of uh, thing I take from the theory which I want to justify or to derive, but I take only one feature. I take uh, the fact that the hypercharge is central. It, uh, in the present uh, formulation of the standard model gauge group, it commutes with all uh, other generators. And also, we cannot even conceive, I don't know a simple way to conceive, violation of hypercharge. Even if we have proton decay, uh, it uh, doesn't in uh, it wouldn't even if uh, we have for instance Majorana neutrino it violates B minus L uh, because it jumps B minus L with two, but at the same time the right-handed third component of the isospin uh, uh, jumps with minus uh, the same quantity, and uh, the hypercharge is well-defined in zero for the Majorana neutrino as well, uh, while uh, B minus L is not. So, in, in effect, one, uh, I think that one thing I uh, missed to answer Kirill's uh, question at the end is that 
the gauge group of the standard model can be defined as the group that annihilates or generators annihilates the sterile neutrino. That throws away the extra B minus L generator. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, any more questions? So maybe we 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 were already we're quite late already. So maybe we should uh, wrap it up. So Ivan, thank you again for a very interesting talk. Thank you.